Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of interviewing and highlighting some truly interesting people. Everyone who is anyone, both the famous and the infamous, from presidents and their first ladies to kings and queens, movie stars and pop stars, captains of industry, heads of state, sports personalities, innovative entrepreneurs, and some pretty fascinating everyday people. Today, I'm proud to introduce you to Dale Coder, whose passion to aid and educate women on finances was really instrumental in driving the existence of the first woman's bank, and who founded the Coder Institute to facilitate the free exchange of ideas among its members and the world's leading political, scientific, corporate, and theological minds. Dale, it's a pleasure to meet you and a pleasure to talk with you today. I'd love to start off with the basics. What's the mission of the Coderre Institute? And tell me what would be the one thing you want other people to know about the Institute? We, the purpose of the Institute was to get people together who like to think and to talk to each other and communicate. I think we're doing a better job than our government at this point. Hmm. But these are people who are powerful, who are people that are known and people who are not well known, young and old. And I tell you, it's working and it's been working for 20 years. 20 years is an awfully long time. I mean, two decades of thoughtful, intelligent conversation. How did your career path and personal experiences lead you to become the head of the Coderre Institute? I started, I got married at the age of 21 finished college with my husband, was behind my husband's career. And one day I have to thank him, I got divorced. And because of that, I found out I didn't have any money and I did, almost didn't have a home. And I had two children and I got scared. Mm. I found out that women in New York could not get, al uh, they could only get alimony and child support. They could not get equity, they could not get loans, and you couldn't even get your own credit card, which I've always had. So sometimes the things that seem the worst to you in life may be the best. It seems as if you got a little bit of an uh, eye-opening experience because you went basically from your parents' home to a home with a husband and became a homemaker. And then all of a sudden, wow, I'm a grown-up woman, a whole human being in and of myself, and now I have to exist. You got it. Yes. So, Dale, it's interesting. Um, I find that a number of women get that wake up call, like a splash of water in your face. What was it like for you? Because it's been a little bit of some time ago. Well, I, you still go through it. First, you get scared mm -hmm. because you don't even know where to begin. Um, I almost lost my I thought I had a home with two children. And of course, in divorce, people are argumentative. And so you never know what's going to happen. Then he turned out to be a good guy, and then he turned out to not to be, a, you know, what happens in other people's divorces. But what happened is that I decided I wanted to, I was going to have to make money, and I didn't want to lose, I, I stayed in my home with my will, not with the law, because there was no law on my side. And I decided to go to work. And my first job was in commercial, was residential and then commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. And then a lawyer came into my life uh, who said, would you like to be part of a bank? And I said, I don't even balance my own checkbook. Uh -huh. And uh, that is true. I, I, I was, <laughs> I promise you, I was never had any concept in life. I was, I had the concept to be behind a man. Yes. Not be behind myself. And I'd like to be behind women today. So uh, that was how I started. And I had a lot of great older women. I was the youngest in the group at the time. The, the women I was a part of was Mickey Seabird and all the women who, you know, were true entrepreneurs who broke open. Um, and uh, there was a wonderful woman, Dorothy Orr. She was the first black lady who was part of Equitable. I mean, I'm talking about real women who broke down those doors. 
I'd love for you to share how your efforts personally helped women become more financially independent because you really were a pioneer in that area. Because uh, as we think about it, you ended up becoming one of the people driving these particular accomplishments. So please share that with us, Dale. Uh, how does one begin? We sat on a board of a bank and women weren't used to getting along. You know, they didn't understand how to work together. And somehow I, I like people. So I learned how to work together. Then I went and heard a man talk and he was head of the Venetianikam Bank from Russia. And I, I knew who he was, but most of the people didn't know. He was talking at St. John the Divine. And later he invited me to come to Russia and I land up lecturing in Russia and China and other places talking about banking, but also about how important women are. And I found out uh, in Europe, women had jobs like being um, a pharmacist or a doctor. We didn't have that so readily when we were growing up. So that's how I started going. And I started bringing entrepreneurs to Moscow and to China and other places. And Dale, throughout your career, you've literally been someone to champion the whole concept of walking through open doors. And you've done so frequently as I look at this amazing resume. Can you speak a little bit more about this notion? Uh, and how has doing so really made a difference in your life? And, and since we are all gonna be students of yours right now, how might it do so for other women? Oh, the first thing to make a woman or anybody really free is to have the ability to have a credit card and be able to borrow money. Because if you have a little money, you can, people will help you along the way. I had no concept about my life. As I told you about going to these foreign countries, why in the heck would I ever be there? I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I, I mean, a 21 year old getting married, not knowing a damn thing about anything, except how to be a good wife, hopefully. But the doors opened and I had very interesting male friends, not boyfriends, nothing like that, but men who were really willing to help me. And I got called up by a bank that I was working with the Deutsche Bank. I started with them in real estate and uh, they invited me to come to, to, uh, to Germany. And then I got invited to go to Poland. I was there during solidarity. I, I walked through the doors with most net, uh, probably sensible people wouldn't do it, but I did it. And uh, I got to tell you, it was wonderful. And one of the best things that happened to me was I was invited out to the Aspen Institute. And that's when they usually have all the men at that time, because women were stuck around the circle. And I met some very strong people who were very much behind me. And I helped them going to places. Mm -hmm. And that's where I got the idea of discussing about ideas. As we talk about this, um, it just reminds me of something that I always say, when preparation meets opportunity, you can pretty much accomplish everything. And so clearly you were prepared to walk through those doors when they uh, were open to you. Um, let's talk professionally for just a minute. Have you noticed any changes to the banking industry over the years since you started, you know, as that 21 year old having to figure it all out? Walter Riston said to me, what's the purpose of your bank? And I said to him, well, we don't have third world debt. And then another man named Nick Brady, with the Brady Bonds, said that he couldn't understand why we'd have a bank. Well, today, any woman, I believe any woman, can walk into a bank and get a loan and get credit if she has a good credit rating. Mm -hmm. One of the things I used to do is go around talking to people to borrow women $25,000 and pay it back slowly and get a credit rating. And so that might be one of the first things I did. 
And I found out you now have women head of banks. Just look at it. There was no woman ever head of a bank. Yes, indeed. You know, Dale, as I, I hear you talking a little bit about the women's bank, a lot of you know younger generation are like, what is she talking about? Women had to have their own separate bank, but there's been such a movement towards not just equality, but equity to give women the opportunity to simply sit at the table. How has that, in your opinion, really impacted on society? Because the Codera Institute is about thought and how thought leadership can move the needle forward. The most important the best team I found when I was working, I used to sell office buildings and shopping centers. And when I was doing that and take giving loans in the bank, the man woman team is the best team you can have. And that's why I think having this wonderful vice president with the president is fabulous because women have a different perspective and uh, we call it, uh, to let it's it's empathy it's empathy empathy i was trying to tell you empathy is the most important thing i know but you get a sense and when you can trust somebody you can get to yes i i, I listen some people may call it baloney but i tend to agree with you i think when you walk into a meeting dale with a solution oriented attitude you can get to yes if you walk in with a that's never going to happen attitude, that's very much more difficult to get to that yes. Would you agree? I totally agree with you. That's the most important. I have a friend who's a doctor. She's 85 years old. So to be a doctor at that age was unusual. And she's a member of the Institute. And I really want to say this because it's something important. She became a doctor when women weren't doing that. And she was involved, uh, and she was one of the first people who learned about chemotherapy. And she started realizing, and then she did hospice, but she realized doctors didn't understand, some of the men doctors did not understand this whole thing about empathy. So she started teaching doctors how to paint. They were to paint each other. One would be the patient and one would be the doctor. And then she started to explain to them, that's what your patient sees when they see you. And this is what you see when you see them. And she has done a lot of work in medical schools to teach doctors empathy. What a, a fascinating way to get someone to step outside of themselves and see themselves as they present to others. Um, you know, clearly you had to provide for your family when you found yourself alone after um, uh, your divorce. So let's talk a little bit about family, your children and now your grandchildren, especially. What role did they play in your success and really in the way in which you moved throughout the world? Well, my children were pretty mad at me for being divorced. Okay. So for a while, and I had to go to work. I literally had to go to work. And so, but I made sure I was at every birthday party, every time going to school and doing everything. And I was involved in helping the schools get diversity because they went to a pri uh, private schools in New York. And I wanted them to have uh, a, a complete education, not one that was totally sheltered. And so I wanted my children to have the ability if they want to do anything in their life, they could do it. And so I kept on, they saw me <laughs> and I kept on telling them, even though I had nobody to say, stick up for your mother, uh, you know, I was the worst and the best, you know, I was it. But and isn't that always the case when it comes to being a mom? I bet you, but now my children are older and each, I am so proud of them. Adele, just let's talk a little bit about outside of the Institute. I know that, being a part of the community, a vital giving part of the community is important to you. Talk a little bit about um, how you participate with community activities and community service. Well, I'm on the board of the zoo here in Palm Beach, which I adore these animals. It's the best way for children to learn how to get along with each other. 
I helped support that big time. I, let's see, oh, I was on the board of the Kennedy Center. So we are trying to build a community of ideas and spread it so that people will start talking to each other, with each other, not just at each other. I thank you for talking about just talking to each other and having conversations. Um, what is the one thing that you'd like the viewer of this video feature to walk away with? Talk to a stranger that you don't know. Try to find out about someone's feelings and you find out you're not so separate. What a wonderful thing to think. Um, uh, I, I learn the most by having conversations. This is one of the reasons why I was so looking forward to chatting with you today and uh, learning more about the Institute and learning more about your philosophy, but also thanking you for being a pioneer when it came to women in business. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion doesn't is not just the right thing to do. It's the business savvy thing to do. It's the way you grow business. It's the way you grow industry. It's how you make society not just more inclusive, but really better. Um, and I, I thank you for the work that you have done and in adding to conversation, because as you and I both know, one good conversation can shift the direction of change forever. So thank you, Dale. Thank you very much. I'm with you.